greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. I thank God that is part of the uh, MCO that we are able to meet in the church for a daily uh, Holy Eucharist. We have our two services every day. 10 a.m. Uh, we have uh, in Hamel and then uh, 8 p.m. in English. I thank God for those who have uh, made it a point to uh, attend uh, these services as part of their Lenten uh, discipline. For me personally, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And uh, in today's uh, Old Testament uh, lesson, Jonah chapter 3. We read about uh, Jonah, Jonah's preaching, and how the people of Nineveh responded to the message that uh, Jonah brought to the people of Nineveh. Now we know that uh, we, we, we know the story of Jonah. Some even uh, call uh, Jonah the runaway uh, prophet. God called him and uh, sent him to Nineveh. And instead of uh, going to Nineveh, he got onto a ship and went, and went the opposite direction. And now uh, Jonah, after realizing his mistake, God, God gave him a second chance and said, now, you go to Nineveh. Now, you must keep in mind that uh, no other prophets were sent by God to the Gentiles. The Ninevites were Gentiles. Prophets were sent to the people of uh, Israel. But this is the first time uh, a prophet was being sent to the, uh, the people of the Gentile world with a message of repentance. So of course, uh, Jonah being a, a Jew, a nationalist, for him uh, to take this message to uh, the Ninevites was definitely a no, no, no. The Ninevites and uh, the Jewish Jews were not the best of friends. The Jews simply hated the Ninevites for all that uh, they had done to the people of uh, Israel. And now God was calling uh, Jonah, a Jew, to take the message of repentance. Initially, he said no. And uh, the second time, he said, yes, I will go. And then look at the message of uh, Jonah, the shortest uh, sermon ever preached, shortest sermon and the most effective uh, sermon. sermon. Verse uh, 5, the Ninevites believed God in response to the sermon or the message that uh, Jonah brought to the people of uh, Anyway, verse 4. On the first day Jonah started into the city, he proclaimed 40 more days, and Nineveh will be overturned. A message of judgment. He was not even uh, saying, Repent. If not, God is going to overturn uh, Nineveh. His message was simple, a message of judgment. Judgment is coming. Full stop. Only eight word uh, message. 
And verse 5, the Ninevites believed God. <laughs> okay, see how powerful the message of uh, Jonah was. I believe it was not just yes, uh, Jonah was uh, proclaiming the message, it was God was uh, speaking to the people of Nineveh through Jonah. And when the people of Nineveh heard what God was about to do to uh, Nineveh, it's believed. They declared a past, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. They repented. They repented. After listening to the message that Jonah brought to them. Verse 6. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. We see how it was not, it was not just the ordinary people, even the king. After hearing what Jonah had uh, preached, he also repented. Then he issued a, proclam a proclamation in Nineveh. By the degree of the king and his nobles, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. Absolute fasting. Absolute fasting. Now, of course, we do a partial fasting. We take liquid. Some people take uh, milk, some people take uh, Milo, some people go on a vegetarian fast. But here, the king declared absolute fasting, not only for the people, also for the animals. He said, no one is to eat or to drink. And it goes on to say, but let men and beasts be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God, not just passing. Let everyone urgently call on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their whines. The people of Nineveh was known, were known for, for being notoriously whining to their captives. And here now, after listening to a uh, the message that uh, Jonah brought, the king said, Let everyone call urgently on God. Now, fasting is not uh, just uh, skipping meals or giving up something that uh, we uh, like. Some people give up chocolates. And then when uh, Easter comes around, they are just uh, consuming as much chocolate as possible. For the 40 days that they have skipped. That's not fasting. Now, fasting, the king said, now, absolute fasting. No one is to eat or to drink anything. Stop. It was like a complete lockdown. The whole of Nineveh was under lockdown, spiritual lockdown. He said, stop eating, stop drinking. I'm not sure if they had uh, restaurants like, the, like like we have today, if they had all restaurants to be closed because no one is to eat or to drink. And what are they supposed to do? Two things. They were to call on God and to repent of their evil. Now, uh, very interesting, uh, and the people responded. Of course, even before the king sent out the degree, the people had already responded to the message of uh, Jonah. Now, during this uh, season of uh, Lent, as I've said, uh, it is good to fast. We encourage you to fast. But we should, just, we should not just stop at fasting. We must uh, 
sincerely call out to God. Last I ever shared in one of my sharing, fasting is sitting beside Jesus, sitting beside God. And one of the things that uh, we can do during this period of Lent is ask God the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Now sometimes uh, it is not easy to, for, to give up some of the sins that we may have been committing. Sometimes it's not that very easy because uh, it is a spiritual warfare. The devil will always want to keep us under bondage. He might operate in our lives through a certain sin which we may know. Which we know that uh, in what I'm doing will not please God. But yet because uh, we have been uh, doing it and sometimes because we have not been caught, we continue to live in that sin. So what should we do? When we hear the message, when we read the word of God, when we listen to sermons, we must respond like the people of our Nineveh, positive and say, God, we repent. So during this uh, period of Lent, as uh, we passed, we say, God, we repent. God, I repent. And passing is an expression of our sincerity. Saying, God, I'm serious about uh, putting my life in order. Now, you should not be just saying uh, uh, the general confession during a Sunday service. We, we confess our sins, only to uh, go back and commit the same sins. No, when we confess, when we fast, now it's an it's a, it's a expression, God, I am serious. God, I, I, I have been in bondage to this sin. For many, many, many years. Yes, nobody knows, but you know. God, I repent. I am serious about it. So I am fasting. God, food is something that I crave for. But because I want to get out of uh, this uh, bondage, I am coming to you. I come, I come to you and I'm uh, waiting upon you that you will help, you deliver me and uh, you will uh, show mercy and that's what uh, the king of uh, Nineveh said he said uh, God who knows verse 9 who knows God may yet relent the message of uh, Jonah was God is going to overthrow Nineveh full stop it was sermon. I'm sure you like that kind of sermon uh, every Sunday. They go up and the preacher, the pastor goes up, preaches a shorter sermon. Very good pastor. A very good pastor. No, our pastor he preaches a shorter sermon. Uh, people get upset when uh, the preacher goes, uh, preaches a long sermon. Who knows? God may yet relent. The king says, God may yet relent. And with compassion, turn from his fierce anger, so that he we will not perish. So that was a desire of the king. He was hoping that God will uh, show favor. God will relent from the judgment that he had just proclaimed through Jonah. The people of Nineveh, Nineveh were serious about their repentance. And what did God say? Verse 10. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. <clears throat> when God saw how sincere they were, God said, I will not bring the disaster that Haifa proclaimed. 
Now, and anyway, he was saved. Because the people, they passed it. They rent their garments, and rent their heart, not be uh, their garments. Now sometimes that's passing, that's repentance. Which means we say, God, I come before you. God, I come before you. I pray that you'll cleanse my sins. God, I know. God, I know my ways. I know my sins. They are ever before me. That's what uh, David says. God, I know my sins are ever before me. Now I'm confessing my sins to you. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. So during this Sephid of Lent, this could be one that uh, area that you may want to look into. Of course, uh, we can uh, pass and pray for many things. But I believe this is one very important area. Because as long as we harbor sins in our life, the sins can uh, become a hindrance in our relationship with God. So, uh, most people during this let ask God, God, I, I'm sitting before you. Speak to me. As he spoke to the people of uh, Nineveh. God, I repent of my sins. And that's why I'm fasting. I'm fasting not because that he will bless me with all these worldly things. I'm fasting so that my life will be put in order before you. Jonah preached. The people, the people of Nineveh repented. And God did not send a judgment that he had to proclaim through Jonah. So, can we, as individuals and as church, repent of our sins? Let us not look at one and others and say no. Let us look within us and say, God, I repent. God, as a church, we repent. And let God take full control of our lives, of the life of our church. Repent and live. God bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.